In the central part of Asia, between the countries of Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, lies the Aral Sea, or we can better say, what remains of the Aral Sea. Once the third largest lake on Earth, spanning over 68,000 square kilometers, now reduced to a fragmented landscape of water and desert, the Aral Sea's journey from a vast inland sea to an expanding desert, is a stark reminder of the delicate balance of nature. From the bustling fisheries of the 1960s, to the toxic dust storms of today, the lake's transformation is one of the greatest man-made ecological disasters in modern history, one that still haunts Central Asia. In the 1950s, the Aral Sea was one of the world's largest inland bodies of water, covering about 68,000 square kilometers, about the size of Sri Lanka. With a water volume of about 1,100 cubic kilometers, the sea stretched about 435 kilometers from north to south and 290 kilometers from east to west. The Amur Darya and Sir Darya rivers, originating in the Pamir and Tian Shan mountains, respectively, carried glacial meltwater to this great inland sea, sustaining it despite the dry environment. It was a vibrant ecosystem, rich with fish and supported a thriving fishing industry, that employed tens of thousands of people. It played a crucial role in moderating the regional climate, providing moisture to the dry steppes surrounding it. However this all was soon to be changed. In the 1950s, Central Asia, including modern-day Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan, were under Soviet control. The Soviet Union aimed to transform the region into a major cotton producer, referring to cotton as white gold. Beginning in the 1960s, Moscow began constructing large-scale irrigation projects to grow cotton and other crops in the arid region, surrounding the Aral Sea. Water from the Aral Sea's two main sources, the Amur Darya and Sir Darya rivers, was diverted into a vast network of canals to irrigate vast cotton fields in Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, and Kazakhstan. While irrigation had long been practiced in the region, the scale of these projects was unprecedented. However the canals were poorly designed and constructed. This led to enormous water loss, up to 70% of the diverted water evaporated or seeped into the ground, before reaching the cotton fields. In some years, the amount of water taken from the rivers was so extreme, that no water at all reached the Aral Sea. With the river inflows drastically reduced, the Aral Sea area began to shrink. At first, the effects were slow, but as more water was drained, the sea began to shrink more rapidly. By the 1980s, its water level had fallen by more than 10 meters, and its surface area and volume reduced to half of its original size. The salinity levels skyrocketed, devastating aquatic life, the once thriving fisheries collapsed, as their harbors turned into deserts. By the 1990s, the sea had split into two separate bodies of water, the North Aral Sea and the South Aral Sea. Together, these two basins covered just 33,800 square kilometers, less than half of the original sea area. The South Aral Sea area continued to shrink more rapidly than the North Aral Sea, and by 2003, it further divided into the eastern and western basins. The exposed seabed, transformed into the Aralcom Desert, the world's youngest desert, covered in salt flats and toxic residues left behind by agricultural runoff. Amid this crisis, several efforts were made to save what remained of the sea. Between 2003 and 2005, Kazakhstan constructed the Koch Aral Dam, a 12 kilometers long dam preventing water to flow from the North Aral Sea to the South Aral Sea, allowing it to refill. The results were remarkable. Water levels rose, the surface area expanded by 50%, and salinity levels dropped, enabling fish populations to return. However, the South Aral Sea continued to shrink, as Uzbekistan persisted with its intensive cotton farming, consuming vast amounts of water. By 2014, the eastern basin of the South Aral Sea had completely dried up, only a small, highly saline western basin remains. Today, the Aral Sea covers an area of less than 5,000 square kilometers, a fraction of its original size. What was once a unified body of water is now split into several disconnected basins. The North Aral Sea remains partially restored thanks to the Koch Aral Dam, while the South Aral Sea is largely a desert, with occasional seasonal water inflows. 
The surrounding land has been transformed into the Aralcom Desert, a barren wasteland of salt flats and exposed seabed, where dust storms spread toxic residues across the region.